Hello. In this video, we're going to derive an equation for material balance applied to oil fields. And oil fields in a quite general way, where there may also be a gas gap present, uh, there may be also an aquifer dry water moving into the reservoir. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the derivation in a sort of step-by-step -step manner. Um, it's not a derivation that really I think people need to memorize. It's not terribly illuminating and the final equation you get is really rather complicated. But what's important and really what the emphasis here is not to be hung up on the details. You, know, you can basically look up the equation in a standard textbook. Um, but to understand the physics of the process, because that tells you essentially the production mechanisms. Okay, so what I'm going to do as uh, before, I'm going to uh, go through this um, on the whiteboard. Yeah. Okay, so let's, um, before we even start, let's, uh, do my uh, classic cartoon, right? My oil field. I don't have to have a, a red pen necessarily. Okay, so we're going to have a general case. Potentially, we've got gas here, we got oil here, and we will have water. We will have an aquifer. Okay, and I just want to first of all just define some terms. Um, before we start, okay, because they go, they're going to be useful, um, and then we'll then we'll press on with the derivation. You know the different effects that we're looking. At. So the first thing I want to define is N. That is the stoip, the stock tank oil initially in place. So how much oil do we have? As though I would take all the oil underground and bring it to the surface. Okay, so we we already know how to do this. This is V by gross rock volume porosity net to gross, okay, initial oil saturation, and then we're going to bring it to the surface. So we have VOI. We've also got gas present. Okay, so what's the initial um, gas that's in place? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to assume that the gas cap, right, has a ratio of reservoir volume to the ore column. So let, uh, what do I mean by this? So we can say here that this is the gross rock volume for the gas, right? Times the porosity, times the net to gross, times an SGI, and that's gonna be divided by a VGI. So now let's uh, say some of the assumptions we're going to say. We're actually going to write SOI and SGI as being roughly speaking the same because they're one minus whatever the initial water saturation is. Okay, so we're gonna write this in terms of the initial water saturation. So that's the, the first thing we're going to do. And then we're going to say that the initial volume of gas that we have in the gas column, so VGR by net to gross, okay, that's times SGI divided by what it is for the ore column, that's gonna equal M. And that's just a definition. So we just define M as the ratio of the gas volume to the oil volume measured at reservoir conditions. So it's just a definition. You don't need to sort of think too much about it. It just happens that it's convenient in the analysis of material balance of an oil field with a gas cap to think about M rather than G. And the reason why G can be slightly misleading is G is obviously the size, the amount of gas in the gas cap, but when I bring all the gas and oil to the surface, obviously there's gas that was in the gas cap, but also I produce solution gas as well. So G isn't, you know, this, this definition of G is actually not the gas in place, it's the gas that's just in the gas cap. Okay, so there is that little subtlety there. So it's much better to, to think about things in terms of M. And so then you can see here that V phi right, NG SOI, okay, which is this bit is NBOI, 
Okay, the V phi N G S G I. Okay, and that can be written as M as G B G I. Okay, and so M by definition, okay, is let's go through this. This is G B G I. Over N. Okay. So we can write M in terms of G and N if we wish. Okay. So that's that's just a definition. That's just to sort of get us started. We haven't really uh, at this stage done, uh, I wouldn't say, a great deal. Okay. So now let's think about the physical processes that occur. Okay. So I'm going to drill a well, okay, and I'm going to produce fluid, and I've got my um, oil that I produce, and I'm going to produce gas, and I can also, one thing I've ignored, for instance, gas field material balance, which shouldn't come as a big surprise, I can produce water as well, okay. So what can come out of the well is a combination of oil, gas, and water, and I measure that, that's the, my cumulative production, that's how much I've ever produced in the field. Um, and as I do this, the pressure, obviously, in the field would decline. So what are the, uh, th the, what can happen physically? Well, obviously the pressure in the oil column declines. And if I go below the bubble point, I start dissolving um, gas. So I go below the bubble point and I've got gas being produced. That's what those little circles are supposed to represent. So physical effect um, number one, and I think what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna raise a lot of this because um, you know, all of this is standard. I keep M up for now, but this you know, wasn't. This was just a sort of, as I said, a quick, quick definition to get us, get us, get us going. Okay, so let's let's now go through the physics. So number one, right? What actually happens? So we've got the oil plus solution gas. Okay, okay so oil and solution gas expand. Okay, we know that. Okay, um, the second thing is obviously uh, we got gas in the gas cap. So um, as I drop the pressure, the gas is going to expand. So the expansion of the gas either goes up through the well or pushes down in the oil. So we've got the gas cap expansion. The third thing, and maybe I can, uh, you know, let's have my blue pen. Okay, as the pressure drops, just as I did in the gas, uh, in, uh, for the gas field, Okay, as the pressure drop, the water expands and the expansion pushes up into the oil column. So uh, we've got water, the aquifer. Expansion. And then we actually have a final effect that we haven't uh, looked at so far, um, and which is sort of um, difficult to, to show in this diagram, but we have the expansion of water in the hydrocarbon field itself. Okay, so the fourth one is, right, where there's gas and oil, there is also water present. I mean, that was an equation I just um, erased, right? There's initial water saturation. So there's also water present. As I drop the pressure, that water, that conate water, the initial water, will expand. Okay, it's a small effect, but you know, there's no reason to leave it out for any reason. Um, the second is, as I said in a previous video, as the fluid pressure drops, the rock itself is under huge pressure, it's got the weight of rock on it pressing down, right? It presses against the fluids, and the fluids are at a high pressure, they're pushing the rock apart. Okay, the fluid pressure decreases the rock then compresses. So the rock compresses like squeezing a sponge, less dramatic effect, I'd have to say, but that squeezes out. So the, the volume left for the hydrocarbons to be in actually decreases, and that adds to production. So all of these four things are what adds to production. The volume increases. Okay, so how do we, um, what basically do we do, we, um, do with material balance, okay? Um, and, you know, there's no particular way, reason why we do it, but it's just for convenience. What we do 
is we find the reservoir volume of these four effects. So we say oil and solution gas. So we drop below the bubble point, you've got solution gas, the solution gas has expanded, the oil has expanded or shrunk, depending on what's going on. Okay, that's changed the reservoir volume. The gas cap has expanded. What reservoir volume has changed? Water and aquifer expansion, um, and then the, 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 the water in the rock. Okay, so we, those are four expressions. They're a reservoir volume of expansion. Okay? So what we find is that basically, underground, there's been this expansion, but where's it gone, right? Where have those fluids are gone? And that's got to be invoking material balance. We need an equal sign, it's equal something. It's the reservoir volume of the fluids produced. Right? Okay, so that's material balance. The reservoir volume of the expansion with these four effects is the reservoir volume of the fluids produced. Okay, so what I'm gonna to go to do now is I'm just gonna go through these four terms, just step by step. Okay, um, okay. there's no, as I said, there's no, <clears throat> There's no mystery or miracle to this. And as I said, the equation is not terribly intuitive, um, but that's what it is. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna go through them step by step. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna do. Yeah. Let's do number one first. Right. So that's too big. Makes sense, so I'm gonna do this one. Um, oil and solution gas. Okay, Dick. Okay, so let's let's think about this. Um, so initially, we have N is the uh, stock tank oil in place, and its reservoir volume is N V O I because that's reservoir over surface. So this is the surface volume. This is the reservoir. Volume. So this is the volume of oil in the reservoir initially. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not going to invoke material balance straight away. I'm not going to say, oh, well, we've produced some oil and what's left. No, let's just keep all that oil there, drop the pressure. How much has it expanded? Now, at the moment, it begins a bit bizarre. Well, it's expanded, but it can't. It's got to go well up through the well. No, just pause. Just look at the expansion. At the end, we say it's equal to what's produced. Okay, so at the moment, we're not thinking about production. So imagine by some process, it all stays underground, okay? So we still have the same volume N, don't we? So it's reservoir volume is N V O. So the expansion of oil is going to be N V O minus B O I. You say, well, okay, that's fine, but if we're below the bubble point, uh, sorry, if we're above the bubble point, as I drop the pressure, the oil expands, BO goes up, that's a positive number, below the bubble point, uh, it shrinks. And so it seems like a shrinkage. And that seems a bit weird. I drop the pressure and things shrink. Aha. That's because we've missed out a term. Because there's another thing that happens. We've also got solution gas. So initially, all of the solution gas dissolves in the oil. But here, not all of the gas has dissolved. And the way of thinking about this is imagine I take all the oil and I bring it to the surface. I have N stock tank barrels of oil, but I also have NRSI, standard cubic feet of gas. And that's just the definition of the solution, um, the, the solution gas oil ratio. So we presented this in a previous video. The solution gas oil ratio is basically how much gas dissolves in the oil when I bring it down into the reservoir. So to begin with, I have N barrels of oil, N RSI, standard cubic feet of gas. By definition, don't overthink it, it's the definition of what RS is, okay? I've defined it that way, so it's this expression, not because it comes from some complex logic. Okay, now, um, what's gonna happen now, if I were to take all the oil and gas to the surface, well then I must have N RSI, but just a moment, some of it's gas. So what doesn't dissolve? If I take it back down into the surface, I've got this much gas, okay? 
but some of it hasn't dissolved. So NRS dissolves, RS at some lower pressure, so I'm at a lower pressure dissolves. Okay. So N R S I minus R S So let's think about it. We get on RS, NRSI is the amount of gas basically that can come out. But now at some lower pressure, I assume I put that oil and gas back underground, but at a lower pressure. Okay, so NRS, NRS dissolves into the oil. But if we're below the bubble point, some of it doesn't dissolve in oil. How much does not dissolve? It's the difference, it's NRSI minus RS. So that's gas, but it's actually gas in the reservoir. And what volume does that have? Well, that's a surface volume. The reservoir volume of the solution gas, so I'm now looking at the solution gas. Okay, the reservoir volume of the solution gas is NRSI minus RS, so this is a positive number below the bubble point, so it cancels out the expansion, times the G. Okay. So how I write this is the oil and gas expansion can be written as N times E naught. And E naught is the expansion of oil plus solution gas, and it's equal to BO minus BRI. Okay, and that can be, that's positive above the bubble point, when this RS equals RSI, so that's, that's negative. So above the bubble point, it's a positive number because it's just oil. Below the bubble point, this becomes negative, but it's more than made up for by this. So this is plus RSI minus RS. And I'm gonna have to use the eraser because we've got too much stuff going on here. G, and as I said, this is all multiplied by N. Okay, so if we want to just make it clearer, I'm afraid you know, we, we don't have a lot of space here. So we write this in terms of E naught, or E O, actually O for oil, E O, which is the expansion of oil, is B O minus B O I. plus BG, I've just rearranged it just for elegance minus RS. Okay, so that is um, the first expression. Okay, and as I said, it's not intuitive. You can't look at this and it's obviously right. You just need to go through the steps. So this is the expansion of the oil. This is the amount of solution gas, basically that is now not in solution, but actually as free gas in the reservoir itself, these bubbles. Basically, this represents the amount of these bubbles, okay? And BG gives us the reservoir volume of these bubbles, okay? So that's, um, that explains uh, that term. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now for the rest of this exercise, I'm just going to talk about E naught. Otherwise, I'd sort of write down, you know, lots and lots of equations. Okay, so that's um, that was point number one. Okay, so let's now go to the others. So, we get to number two. Number two, if you recall, was gas cap expansion. Now here, the way of doing it is when we think about um, G and then we convert it to M. So I just want to uh, write again the equation I had, right? I wrote M as this ratio, but I know it's more convenient to write G. So this is what we had actually on the previous when we started was the relationship between M, which is actually this ratio of reservoir volumes of the gas cap and uh, the oil column 
and then its relationship in terms of G. Okay, it's just easier to, if we do it that way. Okay, so the gas cap expansion. Um, so initially, we've got this uh, surface volume G, okay, and its volume in the reservoir is GVGR. We're now at a lower pressure, and so its volume in the reservoir, we've still got G gas, as I said, we don't account for the production yet, that's coming. So we've got the same amount of gas, but now we're putting it into the reservoir at a lower pressure, so it has a bigger volume, right? Because it isn't compressed so much. So now we got GB, so the expansion of oil and gas is G, right? BG minus BGI. Right? BG increases as I drop um, the pressure. And now what I do is I just put, 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 this, put, put this in, so I write it in terms of M, okay? And so it's M N B O I over B G I B G minus B G I. And it's for those of you who sort of try and just memorize equations, it looks slightly different in form for what we had for gas material balance. It seems the other way around because when I write it here, I've got N M B O I and then B G over B G I minus one, okay? So the way um, in which I write this, okay, is now as follows. Gas cap expansion, okay, is written as this form. The gas cap expansion is NM EG, okay? And then by definition, EG is BOI, written this way so let's, let's see okay so this is probably uh, of all the terms pretty straightforward um there's no particular hopefully there's no um particular complexity here okay it's perfectly straightforward expansion of just the gas the only thing that's a bit complicated is you know why the boi suddenly appears right why have i got this m it's just the definition of M, right? So it's perfectly straightforward in terms of G. This is the amount of gas you have at the surface. What I do is I imagine I bring it down in the reservoir at high pressure, so it's really compressed. I then imagine it's brought down into the reservoir at a lower pressure, so it's less compressed. And I look at that difference. That's that difference in reservoir volume. And that's what's written here. It's a difference in reservoir, it's a change in reservoir volume. And it's simply written for convenience as N, M. So it's relative to the size of the oil column. M is the ratio of the size, so NM is the size of the gas we got times EG, and EG is, is, is simply um, defined in, in this way. Okay. Right, so uh, that's step two. Now let's do step three. Okay, so we don't need this anymore. Three is let's do it in blue because it's the water in place. Now this is the easiest. Okay, um, the water influx is defined as WE. WE for those of you who saw the the video on gas uh, field material balance. So what happens is the oil and gas are in contact with a body of water in porous rock. We call that the aquifer. So this beast here is called the aquifer. Okay. As the pressure drops, the pressure will drop in the aquifer as well. The water in the aquifer will expand, um, but also the rock will compress. Okay. And we just define, again, we do it to make it easy. Okay. We define WE as the reservoir volume of water that moves in. Um, right, that's it. Therefore, we can go on to step four, can't we? Um, what we need, obviously, this this isn't terribly helpful because we can be, in principle, a, a function of both pressure and time, and we want to know what it is. So, what we're going to use, um, just as we did in the uh, gas field one, is the pot aquifer model. But it's not the only aquifer. Model. So, in reservoir engineering, there are a number of aquifer models you can have. Have on 
got a Tracy aquifer model that's a function both of the geometry, uh, pressure, and time. Okay, so you can have more sophisticated models. Just for simplicity in this presentation, we're going to just choose one aquifer model, which is an aquifer that's actually well connected, relatively small in size, and so the aquifer instantly sees the same pressure drop as seen in the hydrographic column. In which case, W E can be written as W C delta P. And delta P is the pressure drop, so delta P I times P is delta P, and that is a positive number. Okay, so that is um, the water influx. Okay, so that's um, maybe um, of all of them, I would say the simplest. So we've uh, obviously left out uh, step four, which is going to be the most complex. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, last one. So if we get rid of this. Okay, let's go back to a black pen. Okay, so step four is the um, initial water. And actually, initial water expansion, right? Okay, so what we got is we got two effects. We've got the initial water expands and the rock compresses. Okay, and we want to think about how to, how to go about writing an equation for this. And it's going to be an equation in terms of the compressibility of the rock um, and obviously the compressibility of water. So the way in which we can write this is that the total volume of hydrocarbon that we have is some total volume, there's a net to gross, there's a porosity, right? One minus SWI or SWC, the initial water saturation. And this can be written, okay, as some total volume net to gross times porosity minus VW, where VW is the water volume. Okay, now why have I written it this way? Let's, go, let's just go through this. Because what's going to happen are two effects, and you need to think this physically, otherwise, you know, the, the, the equation is not super complex, but they sort of go around in circles, is here we've got a porosity term, and we know what's going to happen. As I drop the pressure, the porosity decreases. So actually, the volume is left for hydrocarbons decreases, right? So the, the, you know, the hydrocarbon can be in the pore space, I've compressed the rock, there's less volume for it. That's gonna add to production. So we know it's a positive number because it's squeezing all out, okay? So the porosity is gonna change. The other thing here is we got the hydrocarbon volume, which is, which is the total pore volume, minus some water. So we've got a volume of water. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drop pressure and that water will expand. So that, again, that will decrease the apparent volume available for hydrocarbons, so it will add to production. So what I can do is I can write a derivative dVH by dP, okay? And the things I'm looking at are gonna change, and I'm just gonna call this one VT net to gross. I can call this V with a capital T. So it's, it's basically the, the poor volume um, um, that, that, we, that we're considering that, that, that has any production. So we can call this again uh, just a V capital T, just for just, just for simplicity. Right? So it's a VT, right? V five by DP minus V VW by DP. And then what we do is we define compressibilities. Okay, so what, what have I done? What have I done here? Okay, so if we look at this compressibility, this is the traditional definition of a compressibility. Right? A compressibility is one over a volume 
the change in volume with the pressure. I've done partial derivatives here because technically speaking, it's the isothermal compressibility. It's the compressibility at constant temperature. In the reservoir, under normal production, this is constant temperature. So that's okay. Okay. So this is a constant temperature. It's the change in volume with pressure, one over VDVDP. That's the compressibility of water. And it's a reasonably well understood beast. Obviously, it depends a little bit on the composition, the temperature and pressure conditions. Um, but we're normally looking at a compressibility of water that's about 10 to the minus 10 Pascal. So it's, it's a tiny amount. Okay? Um, you know this, water isn't very compressible. What it means if we, for instance, you know, we're at atmospheric pressure, if we double the pressure, so we go to two atmospheres pressure, that's about 10 to the 5 Pascal. The change in volume is one part in 100,000. So it's a thousandth of a percent. It's sorry, four parts. I was it's four times. So four parts uh, in a hundred thousand. So uh, four thousandths of a percent. So yeah, water isn't very compressible, but the body of water, the aquifer, can be huge. The second term here is the rock compressibility. Now you've got to be careful with signs. So here it's a negative sign. Why? Obviously, as I squeeze something, it gets smaller. Okay. So pressure goes up, volume goes down. In this particular case, pressure goes down, volume goes up. C, it's a physical constant. We normally have physical constants that are positive for normal materials. So there's a minus sign there. Okay. Now let's look about this. This is um, called the pore volume compressor. Um, what this is, is the change in porosity with pressure divided by porosity. So it's the fractional change in porosity with pressure. But the pressure here is the fluid pressure, not the pressure on the grains, but the pressure in the fluid. As I drop the fluid pressure, the rock compresses. So pressure goes down, porosity goes down. Pressure goes up, porosity goes up as I force the grains of the rock. So actually, there's no minus sign. It's actually something that's measured in the lab and it's measured quite carefully. So you take a piece of rock, you put the rock under the rock pressure, the high pressure it is deep underground. You put in fluids which are also at a high pressure, but not such a high pressure. And then what you do is you drop the fluid pressure. So what happens is the rock actually compresses. And you see this, there's a slight change in volume of the rock. Okay. And the pore volume compressibility, this um, is very variable. It has values that um, can be as high as 10 to the minus 7 and as low as 10 to the minus 12 for Pascal. Um, the low values make sense. You imagine something that's completely consolidated, so you've just got quartz. That's really the compressibility of glass, for instance. Well, water's pretty incompressible, but glass is going to be even less compressible than we're down another two orders of magnitude. On the other hand, um, if we have sand, Right. If the rock um, actually is a sand, so it's not really um, consolidated, you know, you walk along the beach, you know, you see your footprints. Right? Um, you're making a coffee or a barista is making a coffee. You've got the powdered coffee grains. You just go tap, tap, and you see a big change in volume. So granular material um, is very compressible. And it's not compressible because the grains are compressible. It's because the grains rearrange in the pore space to get a tighter backing. Okay? So in fact, you can have some rocks, sands, that are much more compressible than water because essentially the grain, the packing rearrangements. You think about this with soils or sands or coffee grains or any powdered material. You pour it out and then a bit of tapping and shaking and the volume goes down. And it's not obviously better, right? It's just better. Okay. So um, we've done a lot of talking here. Let's um, now put this in the equations. So we need to give ourselves a little bit of room here, unfortunately. So we've got a bit of room here, haven't we? So let's uh, do here. So what we have here, so d phi dp, okay, is phi c phi. So dvh phi dp is vt phi c right, because the d phi d phi is phi c phi, and then we got vt. Then the water term, notice there's two minus signs, so this is looking good, okay, dvw divided by dp is just vw, right, cw, okay. And then we want to write that actually in terms of vh, okay, so this is vh, okay, now let's see what terms we have. We got phi c phi, 
but we've also got a one minus SWI. So it's phi C phi over one minus SWI plus VW CW and VW K is, is this last term here. Okay. And this is SW times VT. So this is plus SW CW. Okay. Because VW, let's write this as VW is SW. I um, SWI V okay, VT times phi, okay, which is VH divided by S W. Okay. So when we put v, VH here, we got the SW term here, we got the C. And just a minute, the, the, the porosity term goes here, sorry. Porosity term, right, VT phi, VT phi is VH1 minus SWI. So there's no porosity term. Okay, so we get here, the one minus SWI is this term. Okay, we've got C phi from here. We've got the plus CW and there's an SW term here because the volume of water has an SW term. And then we can make that SW. Okay, so now what we have is then we see a dVH by dP is VH times this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, remove this bit. Okay, so this is a derivative. The change in hydrocarbon pore volume, okay, is going to be VH times delta P, assuming that these terms are all constant, okay, and then we got this sort of term with compressibilities. Okay, now just let's think about signs because signs been a bit of an issue. The change in hydrocarbon pore volume is actually technically a negative number. There is less room for the hydrocarbons. Delta P is a pressure drop, so it looks like a positive number. So again, don't get signs muddled. We know, yes, we know that it's negative, but it's adding to production. All of these terms are positive terms adding to production. So we want, in the end, on the right-hand side, a positive number. So delta P is a pressure drop, VH, and that, that, that's fine. But now what we want to do is we want to write VH, okay, which is the hydrocarbon pore volume um, in terms of um, my M and N. So we know that N is the reservoir volume of oil. NBOI is the reservoir hydrocarbon pore volume, but that's just in the oil column. We've also got the gas cap. So actually VH is one plus M, that's the oil, this is the gas cap times N times B. Okay. And so this can be written in terms of N and BOI because we, you know, we don't know the V pi's. Okay. So the hydrocarbon pore volume, if it was just oil, is N BOI. One plus M because of the gas cap, and that's the definition of M. Okay. So we don't again have to overthink it. And so then uh, how we can write this expansion. Okay, this gets a bit. Terms in the north. Okay, we write this as the, we call it ER, okay? And we can write basically the change in volume can be written as one plus M N E R. Okay, so that's the rock expansion where ER is basically the terms that are left behind here. There is a BOI. There is this compressibility term. Which, 
and then there's a delta p. Okay, so that's um, that's the fourth term, and it's probably is the most confusing because you, you've got to deal with this water and oil and the, the hydrocarbon pore volume. Um, but if you know you can go through it, this this does indeed all make sense. I didn't want to to show too many steps because I didn't have much room here. But in the end, you get a a, a quote rock expansion term. There's this BOI just because of this conversion. Okay, it's proportional to a pressure drop. That's a positive number. And then there's this compressibility term. And this compressibility is the compressibility of the rock. This is the compressibility of the initial water. And there is a water saturation term here because obviously the more water there is, the more expansion of water. Okay. And uh, the one minus SWI is again another correction factor because we looked at the total pore volume as opposed to just the hydrocarbon volume. Okay. So those are my um, four terms. Okay. So we're almost done because um, now it's time to invoke material balance. So basically, uh, those four terms, so they're all positive. We've all assumed magically that all the fluids have stayed underground, which we know is not correct, because so they, you know, now we've got this extra one. So the final version of material balance has got to be, right? Okay, we've got, one plus two plus three plus four, those are those four terms we've got to, equals the reservoir volume. And we call that F, okay? F for fluids, okay? The reservoir volume of the produced fluids. So you say, well, that's easy. Uh, the reservoir volume I produced um, MP, so that's going to be BO plus the gas produced times BG plus the water produced times BW. Okay, so that 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 looks fine. Um, um, it's not quite right. Okay, so let's let's think about it a bit more carefully. Um, but instead of talking about GP, um, we've defined RP, and RP is just um, the total amount of gas produced divided by. So instead here, you can write this term, right? This becomes uh, MP, RP, BG. Okay. But just a moment, hang on, hang on, ha, 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 hang on. There's one thing that's not right here, right? Because I produce gas, okay? This is the amount of um, um, gas I produced. That's that, that um, uh, sorry, GP is the amount of gas I produce. That's fine. But some of that gas, if I look at its reservoir volume, we don't just multiply by BG, because some of the gas dissolves in the oil, doesn't it? And that's why BO right, is value greater than one. The oil expands. It doesn't expand by some magic process. It expands because it's grabbed some of the gas. Okay? So how much gas dissolves? Uh, is MP. RS dissolved, right? So that stuff basically is as though it's disappeared when it's at reservoir conditions. So this, just a moment, whoa, whoa, something's not right here. Okay. This isn't right. Okay. What's left as gas if NPRS dissolves and NPRP is what we have in total? It's NPRP minus RS is what remains as gas. If we do this again, okay, let's just write that out. This is oil. That's the volume, the reservoir volume of the oil we've produced. This is gas that's actually gas in the reservoir. It's the reservoir volume, the gas that is gas in the reservoir. So, you know, this gas is, this gas I produce, right, when I bring it, quotes back down, some of it, yeah, is these bubbles of gas, some of it is in the gas cap, okay, but some of it dissolves in the oil, okay, so we've got to include that. So F um, is equal to those terms. Um, the water produced, right, we, you know, we just put it back down as water, okay, so that's, that's uh, relatively straightforward, and BW is the water formation volume factor. You might say the water slightly compresses, so it's a value, um, the reservoir volume is slightly lower. Sometimes actually there is some um, gas that dissolves uh, from the water. Okay? Um, 
So in fact, we might need to include that in our RS. So the, for instance, there may be CO2 dissolved in, in the gas. And so BW can be sometimes slightly greater than one. Also, you have a high temperature, so the, the, the water will expand because the temperature changes. Okay, but anyway, BW is close to one. Okay, so that was F. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. So I'm just gonna write it as F. So I'm not gonna write out the equation in its full glory. I'm just gonna So F, reservoir volume, is going to be N E naught So this, oops, sorry, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So here in red is the final equation. Okay, and the things we have here. Okay, so F is the reservoir volume of the fluids that we produced, okay? And that's got to be equal to four contributions and they mean something physically, okay? One is the expansion of oil, right? So the reservoir volume of the fluids we produced is equal to four things. One, the oil, right? The oil expands, there's also solution gas, that solution gas comes out of solution, so that adds to volume and expands. So that's the first term, EO is the oil and solution gas expansion. Secondly, we might have a gas cap, okay? This gas cap has um, some relative size to the oil column at the reservoir conditions of M, so, and then we've got the expansion of the gas, right? The gas just expands. Third thing is we've got the water, we've got the aquifer, that can be just WE in general, if you want to be, um, you know, use any, reservoir model, so it's just WE, and that's your function of pressure and time in general. Um, we've got a specific hot aquifer model that we've used. And then the final thing is, yeah, the fluid pressure decreases, the water in the reservoir itself will expand and the rock will compress. And so we have, and so the, this, this, is, this is proportional to both what's in the uh, oil column and the gas cap, and this is the rock compressibility. And uh, then we um, have a series of unknowns, in this equation, which is N, which is how much oil we have, M, which tells us how much gas uh, we have, and then um, we have the properties of the water. And potentially, we also don't know the compressibility, but you can actually measure the compressibility. So normally the rock term we can estimate. So the way I'm going to present it is there is this equation with uh, these three unknowns. Okay. Um, obviously, each of these E's, these expansion factors themselves, can be written out, and then you get this long equation. So I'm going to leave it there. That's the material balance equation. And, you know, the derivation, as I said, isn't terribly illuminating, um, but, but hopefully it's been helpful. So that, that brings me to the conclusion of this re relatively long session. Um, what comes next is, OK, you got this equation. So what? How do I use it to find something useful? And what it will do is it will tell me how much oil I have, how much gas I have, um, the strength of the aquifer, and it will then also tell me the production mechanism, tell me how am I producing oil and gas? And that's gonna give you some implications for what you do in the future. So that will come in a subsequent video, but I'm going to pause now. Thank you very much.